Okay, we go to Romans chapter 8. Those um, four verses. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. One would cry, Abba, Father. It is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The spirit of slavery the spirit of slavery is very strong in the church because many people still feel totally incapacitated to lead godly lives. In fact, they think it's impossible to live a life that is pleasing to God, to resist temptation. It is the spirit of slavery because they, they, they're afraid. Now, 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 there are some people, their fear is that if they start, they cannot continue. Oh, I know that I had that fear because I used to say to myself, you know, in those early days of the 70s, I said, oh, it's awesome. It's wonderful that you're a Christian today. But what about five years? What about 10 years? Will you still be a Christian? Or would you have fallen off the cliff? And what cured it, <laughs> what cured it totally was the Holy Spirit saying to me, son, don't worry about five years. Don't worry about 10 years. Just follow me one day at a time. And you will know when you have done five years and 10 years and 20 years. I said, you will know. So, so don't, be, don't, be, don't be afraid that, oh, will I be able to say no tomorrow? Ah, say no today. Say no today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just say no today to what's the song. And then when tomorrow comes, you say no to tomorrow, to, to what is wrong. And this is the spirit of slavery. It's incapacitation in the mind. It's a capacitation in the mind. There's no point trying. I know I won't succeed. Who said? That's slavery. And revival comes when we receive that spirit of adoption, knowing that whatever situation we find ourselves, we can cry out, Father, and the power, because it's all about power, the power, the energy to stay strong, to stay godly, will come to us. And that spirit is constantly in communion with our own spirit, that we're children of God. And now, he begins to talk about what preachers love to talk about, heirs. The first time I heard a message on these heirs, the preacher went extensively into the legality of the term joint heirs. And, and he went extensively into explaining what it means that, that when you are a joint heir, your right does not supersede, nor does it diminish. It is the same right as the heir. Hallelujah. And so when you are a joint heir with Christ, it means that whatever Christ inherited, you have as well inherited it. And that's why, and that's why Jesus, I love that statement in John 14, 20. That in that day you will make a discovery that just as the Father is in me and I am in the Father, so am I in you and you in me. Jesus was saying they reproduced the relationship I have with the Father in you so that you can have the same relationship with me on one side. And the Holy Spirit kept emphasizing that scripture to me. 
that you have become one with God through Christ. That's why I, the first time I preached on it, I preached on quadrinity, come join deity. Come join deity, come and become one with God through Christ. Now, joint heirs is such a powerful, powerful uh, a statement of faith to meet you and I at every point of need, at every point of engagement with the enemy, at every point, you know, because you can you can pull yourself up to your full heights, you know, and then exercise your spiritual authority. I, I was told the story of uh, the Prince of Wales, not this one, that he wanted to have fun and, and uh, he, he stood away in the sheep. And, and, and when, when they did something wrong, the captain decided to flog them, the sheep hands. So when he saw how they were killing them, ah, he quickly went to the captain and said, I'm the Prince of Wales, ah, your majesty. So they didn't kill him. <laughs> so so when, when the chips come down, you draw yourself up to your full authority and declare who you are and the powers that you have. Now, he then left this great uh, uh, opportunity of status and power and inheritance to talk about suffering. Wow, it's like somebody saying, oh, don't bring that here now. You're going to, you're going to spoil everything. If, if in fact, in fact, all this, is, all this is predicated, you know, joint heirs with Christ, if, like Shakespeare said, much virtue in if, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Now the question is, what kind of suffering is this? You know, some preachers say that uh, Christ has suffered everything you need to suffer. You don't need to suffer again. Of course, you know that we sing the song, Me, I know, go suffer. And look at it here. They said if in fact we suffer with him. So what kind of suffering? There are two sufferings that are inevitable. Oh, yes. Number one is what we call the suffering to conform into the image of, of and character of Christ. That suffering is necessary. In other words, if our obedience falls short, if our willingness to live in conformity with the character and nature of Christ is falling short, they have to wake us up because that is the goal of the Father, as we will meet in John 8, 29. For those he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his Son. So, so we, have, we are running a program as believers. We have to be conformed to the character and image of Christ. And so if we are not willingly, you know, it, it reminds me of what was happening when we were uh, in uh, elementary school. The teacher will come and, 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 and put up 20 mental arithmetic. If you fail one, you'll be caned once. If you fail five, you'll be caned five times. And the person who got everything is the one doing the caning. You know, so, 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 it, it, it was necessary to, to do mental calculation. And, if, and the teacher felt that that caning is necessary. To, to quicken the brain, to, 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 to do mental arithmetic. You know, nobody writes anything. You have to calculate it in your head. That's the way they used to do it. So suffering that is necessary is one that conforms us to the image of God. You know, the, 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 the spirit will not allow rebellion to continue and, and will awaken us to, to, to know that we are in a program, you know, 
and we are passing and failing exams, then there's another suffering that is necessary. The Apostle Paul calls it the sufferings that remain. You know, let's look at it in Colossians chapter 1. The sufferings that remain. There's always suffering that remain. You know? So the scriptures say here, Colossians 1, I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh I'm completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body that is the church what is lacking you know what is missing the sufferings of Christ Jesus at Christ our Lord he suffered everything that he needed to suffer but he didn't suffer every anything that we need to suffer. Okay. That's why missionaries go out into strange lands and killed by mosquitoes. They are, they, are, they are affected by disease. Those are all sufferings that remain. Because somebody has to go there. Somebody has to uh, uh, pay for it. Somebody has to deny himself. Somebody. There are always sufferings that remain. And if the church is unwilling to, to uh, 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 engage in these sufferings that remain, in these self-denials that remain, in these deprivations that remain, ah, heaven will force us to do it. So there are always sufferings that remain. Those are the two necessary sufferings. You know, but not, not demonic oppression. Not, mm -mm 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 -mm. not uh, you know, those ones you have authority to deal with. Amen. But the sufferings that remain, not in position by devils, no, not the attack of wicked people, no. The sufferings that remain to conform to the image of Christ and to extend the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Amen.